Hello guys, this is Adit. Welcome to my channel Movement Science where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. In this video, we are going to talk about the part 2 of kinetics of your radio ulna joint. Here we will be focusing on the stability, the ligaments and all the passive structures that create stability at the radio ulna joint. So without any further ado, let's get started. So under the part 2 of our kinetics, we are going to cover the stability created by the passive structures. So first we'll have a look at the ligaments and then the interosseous membrane and the TFCC, how two of them create stability at the radio ulnar joint. So first starting with our ligaments, proximally we have our annular ligament and quadrate ligament which stabilizes the proximal radio ulnar joint and also there is the oblique cord which limits supination. If you want to know more in depth about these ligaments and how they work, you can check out my previous video, I'll link it over here at the top to see how these ligaments function together to stabilize the radio ulnar joint. And then distally we have our palmar and the dorsal radio ulnar ligaments. The palmar limits supination and the dorsal limits pronation. Now let's move on to the other structures which create stability at your radio ulnar joint. First, starting with our interosseous membrane, the interosseous membrane along with your articular disc that is the TFCC provides longitudinal stability that is in this direction, right? The transfer stability is mostly provided by your ligaments as well as your muscles but the longitudinal stability is definitely provided by your interosseous membrane and the articular disc. Now, how does the interosseous membrane do it? If you can see over here, it creates these tracts through which the forces can be transmitted. So what happens is during pronation, you can see your hand is in pronation over here, right? When the forces are transmitted, obviously they'll be transmitted through the radius because it has more surface area and it's the bigger bone distally. So as the forces are going up, during pronation, the radius does not touch the capitulum. You can say pronation or also you can say during the elbow varus, right? You can say elbow varus because your radius goes over the ulna in pronation and there is a comparative varus in comparison to supination where there is elbow valgus, right? So during pronation, the capitulum and the radius do not have contact with each other. So the forces cannot be transmitted to your humerus. So that time the interosseous membrane, it has these bands which become taut and the forces are transmitted through the interosseous membrane to the ulna. And that's how the forces are transmitted and longitudinal stability is provided. So that's what I mentioned over here. The tract is taut with pronation, right? Which transfers the load to the ulna from the radius, correct? And opposite thing happens in supination. That is the tract becomes loose with supination and the load passes predominantly through your radius. Now that obviously brings about the question of what happens when your radio ulna joint is in neutral position. When there is neutral position of your radio ulna joint, 93% of the forces are transmitted through the ulna and 7% forces are transmitted through your radius. So that's how the force distribution is with supination, pronation and neutral position of your radio ulna joint. Apart from this, interosseous membrane also reinforces the joint capsule and provides stability at the radio ulnar joint. So now that we know what role interosseous membrane plays, now let's have a look at your articular disc or also known as the triangular fibrocartilaginous complex TFCC. Now this structure regularly bears your tensile that is basically distraction or pulling forces and your compressive loads. It transmits the compressive loads over here at the wrist joint and also stabilizes the carpal bones that are present between your hand and your forearm. And apart from the compressive loads, as we mentioned before, it also takes the tensile load that is basically the distraction forces. And how does it do that? It does it mostly in pronation position in comparison to supination. So that's what I mentioned here, the strain distribution is predominantly seen at the radius and it is very high with pronation and very low during supination. So simply put, with supination, your TFCC does not help that much with distraction forces but if your 
forearm is in pronated position your tfcc takes a lot of distraction forces at your radio ulnar joint so with that we finish off this topic what did we understand we saw how interosseous membrane and tfcc together create the longitudinal stability along with the ligaments which create transfer stability with help of some muscles at the radio ulnar joint so that covers the kinetics part 2 of the radio ulnar joint in future videos i try to cover the other topics under the radio ulnar joint so stay tuned for that and thank you for watching